She has been an advocate for ending domestic violence here in South Carolina. And just last night, State Senator Katrina Shealy got her wish. I sat down exclusively with her for a special edition of Quintus Close Ups. Well, Senator Shealy, let's begin with some breaking news. As we just talked about a moment ago, you were over at the State House for the signing of the domestic violence bill in which Governor Haley took part of. Tell me, where are you emotional with that? Because you were one of the biggest advocates of signing this particular bill. I am very, I'm very emotional. In fact, that's I'm trying to pull myself back sure. together because yeah. I'm, I've, I've waited so long for this to happen. You know, we've worked all year on this, yes. and to me, this is probably the most emotional thing that's going to happen in the state house this year. And to me, you know, it's it's all part of making South Carolina a safer place for women, children, and families. Right. You know, and, I mean, even men. You know, men are victims of domestic sure. violence right. too, and so I think it's it's very important when South Carolina is ranked number two. And domestic violence crimes, and and you know, we've been at number one, right. and in the last 15 years we've been in the top 10 in domestic violence, and you know that's just not a place you want to be. Yeah. And uh, this this is a step in the right direction. That you know is this going to cure domestic violence in South Carolina? Of course not, but this says that South Carolina is serious about taking the step in the right direction. Right. And to me, this is this is where what we needed to do, and. It, am I emotional about it? You're right, I am, yes. because I worked very, very hard on this. Yes, indeed. And you told the Pulse Inquiry this quote, it is well with my soul, still. <laughs> it is. It is well with my soul that we got something done this year on this. Yeah. I mean, and I felt, you know, I'm a very religious person, yes. and uh, so I pray about it a lot, and, yeah. you know, so uh, it, 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 that's what I felt when I was, you know, I, I think about things a lot. I, I process things right. a lot and that's how I felt to, to finally get something done when it got passed in the house you know and I knew that it would be going to the governor's desk and right. I felt sure she would sign it that's right. how I felt I, I thought about you know what can I say because I, I always try to think of something prolific right. to say and I said it is well with my soul that we will get something done and speaking of uh, last night you know as you know you guys actually passed the Uber bill right Talk to me more about that because that has had a lot of controversy, but now it's getting the green light to go forth in South Carolina. Tell me, when you think about it, what goes to your mind? Well, let me tell you, it, Uber to me is not was not that big of an issue because I live in rural Lexington right. County. Yes. You know, how to do it? I take a, a taxi yeah. or a cab. Never. You know, uh, I've used Uber once in my life, and I was in Washington, D.C., I think, oh, yeah. at the time. So I don't even think about a cab. I think about my concern more with Uber was how is it going to affect the normal owner of a, a taxi company? Sure. You know, is it going to affect him business wise? So that would have been my concern. And, you know, I, my understanding was they got that worked out with the owners of the taxi companies because I don't want it to affect someone who is a regular businessman. And, um, but, you know, if it's good for business, I think that's great. And I'm glad they got it worked out yesterday. And let's stay with cars because as you know the governor basically uh, requested to you know borrow 123 million dollars for Volvo and a lot of the prominent lawmakers basically had some issues with that tell me what is your issue with that well you know we were just told the other week that we had that money and we didn't need to borrow it I have a problem with borrowing money okay. that we're gonna have to pay interest on and, you know if we've got the money we don't need to be borrowing well, money yeah. And, and I, my understanding was just the other week that we had that money and we don't need to be paying interest on money. That's, you know, like really maxing out your credit card. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't need to be maxing out our no, credit card, yeah. you know, especially when we just found out we have excess money. Right. So why should we be doing that? Yeah. And you said this on Twitter three days ago, quote, this is going to be a big week. I feel it. Today's the last day of the General Assembly. So tell me where is your mind when you think of that? It is a big week. We signed a domestic violence bill this morning. Right. So that is my big week. Now, the rest of the day is probably going downhill from this morning because, you know, I feel like we've, we've been kind of caught in Groundhog Day. Right. You know, every day we've been listening to Senator Davis talk. Right. You know, I know he used to work for Governor Sanford. I know he was chief of staff. I know they carried pigs into the state house. I know their names were pork and barrel. <laughs> you know, I know they defecated on the state house. Right. Uh, because we've heard that story over and right. over and over again, so right. it is kind of like Groundhog Day. Um, I think we need to. I'm not of the old school where I think that that's a good idea that we can do that. Okay. But that is tradition here, and if you get the floor, you can stay there as long as you yeah. want to. Yeah. Um, I think that we needed to move forward a week and a half ago, but now here we are with you know just hours left to go. Yeah. 
And in the Senate, you know, something, you have to vote on it, and then you have to take a second reading, and then a third reading. We can't do anything else. And, you know, if something's not already had second reading, and we're taking third reading on it today, and it would have to be a House bill, yeah. you know, it can't go anywhere anyway. Wow. You have to wait until January, probably. Right. Wow. Well, well, we'll be back in two weeks, but those have to be certain things that we agree to under the Sonny Dye Agreement. And so we're not, you know, nothing, no regular bill's going to get passed. Finish these sentences for me. The state budget is. Oh, the state budget is. We said, um, with one word, or can I give you, you can more than one? Sure. The state budget is. We spend a lot of money on the state budget. Um, I think the state budget is it within reason, although. I think there's a lot of things that need to be cut out of the state budget. I think we need to be more um, conscientious on how we spend our money, although there's a lot of things that people don't understand about the state budget. Mm -hmm. There are people on the outside looking in that say, oh, you could get rid of this and you can right. get rid of that, right. you can do this and you can do that. But when they get down to looking at what the state budget really is, people on the outside don't understand. You have DSS, you right. have law enforcement, you have uh, education, and they say, oh, you spend too much on education. They don't understand the ins and outs of everything. And so when you're out there looking in, right. oh, it's easy to say See. you're wasting money. But when you're in here, it's not nearly as easy because, you know, I get... I'm very active on Facebook. Yes. And uh, you follow me on Facebook. Facebook, Twitter. Okay, well, my Facebook account, I get a lot of people that, you know, give me all these great ideas. Oh, I see that. You know, yeah. I got a lot of opinions. And I listen to them, but, you know, they don't understand that it's not that easy, easy yeah. to just say, well, you should, you, you should cut that out. Well, it'd be great if I was a dictator. <laughs> But I'm not. Right. I, in the Senate, I'm one of 46, and in the South Carolina Senate, one person can stop something. Right. So I could say it's a great idea, and it might go as far as a piece of paper on my desk and never go any further. But I think the state budget is something that there's some great things that we do out of the money that gets spent out of the right. state budget. Right. There's some waste in the state budget. Right. But there's things that people on the outside don't understand, too. Yeah. The gas taxes. Here's what I think about gas tax. I think that all excess money that we have in the state right. needs to go to fix our roads. But I also think that gas tax is something that we is a sustainable income to maintain our roads. One time funding is not going to keep our roads up in South Carolina. Okay. I'm not. I don't have that pie in the sky attitude that thinks that if we have four hundred million dollars and we take it and we put it all in roads in South Carolina, that that's going to take and fix our roads forever. Because South Carolina roads are in bad shape. And it's going to take more than $400 million to fix our roads. And we are not guaranteed that every year we're going to have $400 million. South Carolina has the third lowest gas tax in the nation. We're lower than all of our neighboring states. People come here to buy gas. Yes, yeah. But also, people, a lot, we have a lot of tourists in South Carolina. Yes. We have great beaches. We have the mountains. We have... Charleston. We yeah. have all these great tourist attractions. So all these people are coming through South Carolina. Why not let them help pay for our roads? Gas tax is a consumption tax. If you don't use it, you don't pay for it. You know, all people are saying fair tax. Well, what's fairer than a consumption tax? So let people that are using gas pay for the gas tax because those are the same people that are using our roads. Okay. And if you have a, you know, we're talking about a, a 12 cents gas tax okay. and then we're talking about spreading over a three-year period. So if you take that and you say four cents a year, right. on 20 gallons of gas, that's 80 cents. You're talking about the average person would spend maybe 48 to $70 a year. Right. How much are you going to spend on your tires, on your car alignments, on all this, on all these horrible roads in South Carolina if we don't fix our roads? Yeah. And people, all these people these, that's been calling, right. all our citizens in sure. South Carolina, and tell them it's a 78% or 72 to 73% gas tax uh, tax no. hike, they're not telling them the whole story. Right. So just, what is the whole story? The whole story in the Senate plan, or the Senate caucus plan, was it was a 12%, I mean a 12 cents, not 12%, sure. a 12 cent gas tax uh, increase over a three-year period, okay. which was what I just explained to you, which right. would be 
eighty cents right. on a twenty gallons of gas, yeah. which that's pretty reasonable. Right. I probably drop that much in my floorboard of my car every week. <laughs> that, not saying much for me being a neat car keeper, yeah. but then that plan also included a one percent um, income tax reduction. Sure. Which in the long run, it made it revenue neutral for South Carolina citizens that were paying personal income tax. And if you weren't paying, in, if you're not paying income tax anyway, you're already getting a tax break because right. you're not paying income tax. Sure. And then it also included restructuring of the Department of Transportation, oh, yeah. which Lord knows we need that. But I mean, it was a great plan. But because we're stuck in Groundhog Day, we haven't gotten there. But that was a good plan. Okay. But we're not going to get there. Speaking of which, the director of DOT resigning was. You want me to comment on that? Sure. I felt like she, she felt like that was coming anyway. It was, that was going to get there, and so she felt like that it was probably the best thing, and we needed to restructure DOT, and okay. it, that was probably inevitable. And let's just move on. And speaking of moving on, let's talk about South Carolina State, and finish these sentences for me. South Carolina State University must. South Carolina State University must get the right leadership. They must learn how to regulate their finances and because South Carolina State is, is a university that needs, they need structure, sure. they need leadership, yeah. and it's part of South Carolina that needs to remain but they need to they need to have leadership. You know, my thoughts were that someone needs to come in and take over and run South Carolina State at, under their wing until South Carolina State can get back on their feet. You know, okay. Clemson University is a land grant university, right. just like South Carolina State. Yeah, yeah. Why can't they become part of that? You know, state remain South Carolina State University. You know, don't become something else. Don't become Clemson University. Remain South Carolina State University. And still remain, you know, the original, you know, black college in sure. South Carolina. Sure. Because that's what they are, and that's something to be proud of. But they need, it needs help, and we want it to be, you know, we want to be proud of it. Right. But we can't be proud of it like it is. But it is something to be proud of that we have that institution. But people that graduate from there right. and people that have that diploma right. cannot continue to be proud of it if they have this dark cloud looming over their head all the time with financial problems and we have to keep letting the board go and right. we have to keep letting the president go. Right. What does that say? I mean, I want to be proud of it. You know, I want to be proud of what's happening there, and the students that graduate from there sure. want to be proud. Right. And there's a lot of good students that go there, and there's a lot of great, you know, people that have their diploma from there right. are good people. Let's give them something to be proud of, but let's we got to lift it up sure. and get out of that hole. And you're never going to get out of that hole if you keep you can't keep throwing money yeah. in a bad situation. That's true. Uh, body cameras on. Um, body cameras are a great idea. But you got to pay for them. Yeah. Finish, uh, describe to me the following, actually, in one word, being a state senator. One word? Can I use, like, three? Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, it's better than I thought it would be. Conservative Christian. That's me, Katrina Sheila. Yes. Uh, grandmother. Uh -huh. Love. That's, that's it. Love and it's the best thing ever. Speaking of which, how is your grandson? Because I know you posted I have something. two. Yeah. I have one that's turned seven today. Oh, happy birthday to yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I called him and asked him how it felt to be seven. And I asked him if he grew any overnight. And he said, I think I grew all over. And then he said, and I, this is kind of funny. He right. said, I think my honey grew because my mama was going to make it swell <laughs> when she gave me seven spankings. Uh, but then the other one is 11. Yeah. And... Um, the eleven-year-old is a tender heart. Right, he's he the one. He had open heart surgery, surgery when he was six months old. He's yeah. tender-hearted. The seven-year-old is the little wild man, but uh, they're they're my heart. That's awesome. And they're here behind me. Oh wow! wow. And beautiful children. Yeah. yeah. But um, I love my grandchildren with all my heart. Yes. Uh, one more to describe you, you being a wife. Um, uh, one word. Uh. I'm probably a caregiver. 
And, and I don't mean it in a bad way, but right, I mean, right, right. It's, it's a caregiver because my husband looks to me to take care of everything. Yeah. Uh, being a businesswoman. Um, obsessive compulsive. Your future. Busy. Wow. Well, Senator Katrina Sheely, this was so great. Thank you so much for your time. I've enjoyed it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that was good.